All right. So, good morning, everyone. Jack, are you awake? Okay. <laughs> Those of you who don't know me very well, what I have the kids at my studio call me is Miss Helene. And I say my name rhymes with Maine to help people. So Helene rhymes with Maine. And uh, I'm definitely not a Miss anymore because I'm almost 50 years old, but you can call me Miss Helene. That's what the kids do. And I'm really excited to have you here in my studio, which is in Manchester in an old farmhouse. And today we're going to spend some time looking at some of the artwork by Vincent Van Gogh and talking a little bit about who he was. And then we're going to do some painting. What I would in encourage you to do is after class and after I hang up on you, is maybe you want to Google Vincent Van Gogh. There are amazing things online about Vincent Van Gogh. There are movies that are not regular movies. They're like painted. There's a painted movie about Vincent Van Gogh. People have made his paintings into animations. Uh, people have written lots of stories about him. And so I would encourage you and your parents maybe just to Google and see what comes up, okay? So how do we say his name? Well, his last name looks like this. It looks like Van Gogh, okay? And his first name was Vincent. Now, Vincent was from the Netherlands. And when he was, this is a self-portrait, a portrait he did of himself. He made, painted many, many portraits, self-portraits of himself. Not because he was obsessed with himself. Oh my God, there's a cat. Um, boy, you guys, that is hysterical. It wasn't that he was really into himself, but he was interested in painting things obsessively. So he would pick subjects and paint them over and over again. Now, there's a couple things you need to know about Van Gogh that I think are really important. Was that he painted furiously. So he painted most of his artworks, most of his paintings in under 15 years. And he died at a pretty young age. Now, here's an example of him painting furiously. Look at these paintings. I'm just going to go like this. Ready? Now, these paintings were of a man named Joseph, and Joseph was a postal worker. Now, why, does anybody have any idea why would Van Gogh paint a painting of this guy named Joseph, who was a postal worker? Does anybody have an idea? Because can you imagine? I We have a nice lady who delivers our mail every day named Bethany, but I can't imagine thinking, I'm going to do 20 paintings of Bethany. Does anybody have an idea of why Joseph might have been important? Go ahead. Yeah, Billy, go ahead. You have to unmute yourself, though. Yes. Okay. Because he brought him his art supplies in the mail or something? Yes, you're right, Billy. So Joseph not only brought him art supplies, but Van Gogh's best friend was his brother, Theo. And Theo gave Van Gogh money to buy his paints, and he also wrote him letters. So they wrote letters to each other almost daily. Now, of course, I didn't tell you this, but the time period we're talking about are the very late 1800s. So they didn't have email or Zoom. They wrote letters all the time. So there's a whole book. This is what it's, this is a book all about all of the letters that Van Gogh and Theo, or I should say Vincent and Theo exchanged. And Vincent was a really beautiful writer. So his, his letters, were just as beautiful as his paintings. I'm gonna read you a little bit of it, and it sounds almost like old 
old, old English, okay? Here's a letter to Theo from Vincent. It is late in the evening, but I want to tell you once more how heartily I hope that our correspondence will become in the future somewhat more animated than it was of late. Enclosed, you will find two scratches from a few studies I made, while at the same time, I am working again at those peasants around the dish of potatoes. So when Van Gogh, when Vincent first started painting, he painted the people who worked in the potato farms around his village in the Netherlands. Um, I painted on a rather large canvas, and as the sketch is now, I think there is some life in it. So he used two words. The words he used was a sketch and a scratch. Does anybody know what the difference between those two might be? Well, Liam, I was hoping you'd answer this. A scratch was a drawing or a sketch he did that he didn't like. He was just gonna throw it out. So Theo would often receive from Vincent little drawings and Theo actually held on to those and they were put into this book. Now I'm just gonna read you one little more, oh my gosh, Liam, you crack me up. I'm gonna read one more little part about this letter and then we're gonna start painting Starry Night. Um, so, I'm skipping over a little bit. He writes, do you know what is a positive argument against that? That the beautiful effects of light in nature demand a very quick hand in drawing. Now I know quite well that the great masters, especially in the period of their ripest experience, knew both how to be elaborate in this in finishing and at the same time to keep a thing full of life. As far as I have got now, however, I see a chance of giving a true expression of what I see. Okay, so Van Gogh always liked to paint from life. That meant that when he was out painting sunflowers in a field, he was actually in the field. And when he was painting people who were farming, he was actually standing in the field and watching them. So he was saying it was really important to paint quickly and to feel confident when you go to draw. So what I was hoping we could do with painting today is I was hoping maybe we could look at that painting of Starry Night and you have a choice, maybe unroll that and have it near you. Now you could look at the whole painting and look at all these little starbursts of um, the stars in the sky, but what I was thinking about is the moon. So that moon is a crescent moon, right? It kind of, um, it goes, it makes sort of like a Pac-Man shape. So I thought maybe I would paint with you watching the moon. If you wanna paint the moon, you could start with the moon. If you would like to paint the little village in the picture, you could do that. Now I wanna tell you a little story about Starry Night. Starry Night was painted in a time period that was not very good for, for Van Gogh, for Vincent. Does anybody know why? Liam, do you remember the story I told you? Uh, no? Because no one liked art? No, gosh no, Liam. Well, his paintings were not very popular until he got older. Does anybody else have a guess of why Vincent maybe was going through a rough time? No, Jack, do you remember maybe something I told you about Vincent? The Great, the Great Depression, no, wait. Well, you could say that Van Gogh suffered from many different mental illnesses and he did have um, some depression for sure, but he had a crush on a girl. And the crush was simultaneously happening when he had an artist friend come and stay with him. And you are funny. And he thought it was gonna be like this great time having his friend visiting him, but it was really stressed him out. And then there was this girl that worked in this restaurant near, next to his house, and he really, really had a crush on her. 
Mm -hmm. And the oh, next did he day, cut his ear for her? he did not cut his ear off like everyone said, but what he did do was he sliced his earlobe, just that part. And uh, it really bled terribly. And anyways, they, they got it under control, but they decided that Van Gogh, Vincent really wasn't well. So he went to a place, sort of, it wasn't like, like a mental asylum. It was sort of like a sanctuary. And they discovered that Vincent really wasn't a harm to himself normally, nor was he to society. So they let him paint. So he went to this kind of quiet sanctuary and it had some outdoor gardens. And he painted there and he was there for a couple of weeks. And the idea for Starry Night, this painting, was sort of, it came to him in the early morning and he was not actually looking at this. He invented, invented Starry Night, which was unusual compared to all his other paintings because he would stand right in a place and look at them. Okay, so anyways, when you look at the sky on this and we start to do some art, what I would say is you have a choice. Do you want to just do the moon? And I'm just going to do the moon, and I thought we could walk through it together. So I'm going to, can you guys see my little hand here? Yep. Okay, I'm going to do the best I can to draw out the moon. Miss Helene, uh, did you know that uh, Van Gogh actually killed himself? Well, actually, Liam, that is not true. It's Mrs. not? Theory. I read a documentary about it where the scientists actually that they thought someone had shot him with a gun, but actually he shot himself with a gun. Actually, Liam, you have it backwards. I think probably because I told you some information about it. They thought because he had some mental illness. Oh, that yeah. <laughs> that he shot himself, but actually he got yes. shot. Yes, but they have, because of technology now, <laughs> they think that actually somebody in the village did it because they realized that the angle he had a bullet in his belly that it was unlikely that that could happen but let's focus on the art okay so what i would do is if you want to make a really nice crescent moon you could start by actually drawing a full moon okay and your hand actually works like a compass so you can make a perfect circle. It's hard to do on this little camera, but you can make a perfect circle, circle, excuse me, and then you can cut in your moon. So can you guys see this? It almost looks like a little, I wonder if I should do it in a pen. Can you guys see that? Oh. So you could make a full moon or you can make a crescent moon. It's up to you. Okay, then what you want you to do is looking at the moon up on the picture, do you see that Van Gogh has all of these brush strokes that kind of radiate out of the moon? You see that? So you can even draw some of those in if you want, okay? All right, so now we're going to start to paint. That's enough information for now. Now, Jack, you can either, you can be painting at the same time because I think you look a little sleepy. <laughs> I'm seeing yawning, Jack. Um, so you can draw in some of these brush strokes a little bit, or let's just start to mix up some paint to do the moon. Are you ready to do that? Okay, so let's look at the colors. Who sees yellow? Well, yellow, Van Gogh said, is the color of light. And in all of his paintings, there was tons and tons of yellow. So what I'm going to ask you to do today is when you're done with your paint, just some general things, is make sure you put these covers on. Now, what I want you to do is not use them directly in these cups. So what you're going to do is pop it open. And that tray that I gave you, this little plastic, it's from the top of an egg carton is where I want you to do so your mixing. So we're gonna do some yellow, but watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna put it in the tray, the amount I need. 
Is it Abby? Is that you? Did you pull a little yellow out and put a little bit in your tray? And then maybe you want to close that up, the yellow. And then maybe we need some white. And I think we need some blue. Now, white is very important to painting. So if I put my dirty yellow brush right in the middle of the white, what's it going to do, everybody? It's going to infect it and make it dirty. So what you could do is you could clean your brush off in the water, dab, dab, dab in the water, and then you could wipe it on a paper towel. You can wipe it on the edges of your cup like this, and then wipe it on a paper towel, and then it's clean enough and then grab some of the white from the side and put it on my tray. And then what other color do you think you'd like to use? Anyone else have another color they want to use? Maybe some blue? So let's do the same thing. Clean our brush off in the water. Dab, 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 dab. Wipe it off on the paper towel and grab some blue. Now the reason why I want you to keep your paint clean is when we do clay later this week, you might wanna paint your clay and this paint could be used for that later, okay? All right, how's everyone doing? Are you guys all good? Shake your heads yes or no? Lucy, are you good? Just shake your head, yes? All right, thumbs up, good. Cameron, is your grandmother for rent? I could use some help at my studio. <laughs> How fun is this? Maybe Cameron, you could give your grandma a, the other little panel and she could paint right with you. That'd be kind of fun, right? All right, so we've drawn in the moon. Liam, are you already starting to paint? And that's okay if you have. If you want to look at the colors of the moon, you could start with yellow and then the straight yellow without any mixing. And then around the moon, you could go lighter with your yellow. It's up to you how you want to do it. But let's just start. So in my tray, I could experiment with making a lighter yellow. I grabbed some of the straight yellow. And I grab some of the white from the side and I mixed it up. I have a light yellow there. Maybe I want to do some more color mixing. I could even make some green, right? Because blue plus yellow makes green. I could grab some of the blue and grab some of the yellow. What other color variation could I make? Oh, I could make some light blue. Remember to clean your brush off in between your colors. Grab some white and grab a little bit of blue. And look, I've got light blue. So I've got all my colors ready. A lot of artists spend some time mixing their colors before they start to paint. Okay, so there's my tray. Look at it up close. I've got all the different colors kind of ready to go. And I'm gonna start with painting my moon, the yellow that's like straight from the container. And I'm gonna use I don't know, maybe I'll use the, yeah, I was trying to decide which size brush to use. I'll use the little one. So here's my yellow and I'm gonna start painting in my, painting in my, my moon. And I'm gonna do a nice, hopefully you guys can see. We can't see what you're painting. Can you, can you see it now? Nope. You can't. Hmm. Put it into grid mode. Screen yeah, it, it, there's two of her. There's one screen, which is her face, and then another, she's another one, which is like what she's painting. Yeah, on the top right, Patty, there's a, um, a little thing with little boxes in it. Oh, gallery view. Yes, there you go. There we, okay, perfect, thank okay, you. Okay, good. These kids are really good at this. They, they could be our teachers. So I'm painting, Do you want to make it a little bit? Now I'm going to start painting in my moon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the whole painting sort of blocked in 
That means I'm going to cover in all my areas and then I'm going to do another coat of paint and I'm going to make the paint thick. Now Van Gogh did not put the paint on light. He was really generous with how he put the paint on. So I'm going to paint the shape of the moon. And then I'm going to fill in the areas. Miss Elaine. Yes, honey. Whoa, Liam, you cranked on that. That's awesome. Okay, so Liam, you could let it dry for a few minutes and you could work on your other little panels. It's up to you. You painted all of Starry Night. Yep. I even made that church. Really? Yeah. I mean, it didn't turn out that well, but I did make a church. Well, you could let it dry. The best thing about paint is you can always paint over it. And I now, added some splatter paint for the... Oh, splatter. good, good, good. We don't want you to not splatter paint. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint in the light blue all the way around my moon. And I'm finding I didn't quite mix enough paint. So I'll probably have to do some more. And I'm using the big fat brush. <laughs> Did everybody get outside this weekend? It was all hot out. It was beautiful. Yeah, I went to the beach. Oh, good. Okay, so I'm painting all the area around the moon. And actually, I'm letting the paint be a little watery. Um, so sometimes with, the, with this kind of paint, you could let it be thick. Or sometimes you could let it be a little drippy. You have choices. And honestly, the best thing about this paint is if you don't like what you did, then you could just paint over it. Or you could, and you can let it dry for a few minutes. So you can, I'm going to fix my moon there because that moon looked kind of look like a Pac-Man. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a second. And you guys keep going. I'm gonna read to you a little bit more about Van Gogh. And then, you, and I'm gonna talk you through, you guys keep painting. I just thought it'd be fun to read you. This is another great book. It's called Kid Artists. And it talks about famous artists and how they were as kids. And I wanted to read to you a little bit about Van Gogh as a child. Now Van Gogh did not know that he was gonna be an artist when he was a kid. He was interested in other things, but also he thought he was gonna be a church minister and he did try that out for a while. But like everything that Van Gogh, he did very obsessively, he was so generous in trying to help people who needed help that he ended up living and being homeless. <laughs> he gave all his food and all his clothing and his house away and he had nothing left. Now, I'm trying to find that. It's so bizarre why that's... Ta -da! Isn't that the way God wants to talk to you? Oh. Now that is so funny. I could have sworn they had this thing on Van Gogh in there. And it disappeared. Who has read this book with me before? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, here's, the, here's a little part of this book. The Boy Who Loved Bugs. So, here we go. A little bit about Van Gogh while you're painting. He would grow up to become one of the most illustrious artists in the world, known for his swirling images of people, plants, and the night skies. But to his neighbors back in the Netherlands, Vincent van Gogh was just a peculiar, peculiar and fiercely determined kid who loved to collect bugs. Every day, neighbors would watch Vincent van Gogh walk down the hill. Through the garden gate, he'd go out into the fields behind his house in search of the elusive water beetles that fascinated him. He carried a glass jar and an old fishing net, the better to skim the beasties off the surface of the creek. 
So the little water bugs was what he was interested in. Has anyone ever noticed water bugs before and how they skirt across the surface of the water? Vincent spent hours sitting on the banks of the stream, waiting silently for a shiny black critter to appear. Each one was unique. Some had crooked legs that wriggled when you plucked them out of the water. Others had long, fearsome looking antennae. And ben Vincent knew the names of all of the different types of bugs. And when he caught one, he'd drop it in his jar for safekeeping during the long trek back home. There in his attic bedroom, he delivered the bugs to their final resting place. He took great care pinning the collected beetles inside tiny specimen boxes. Onto each box, he glued a label with the Latin name of its dearly departed inhabitant. Sometimes he would show the bugs to his sisters before he boxed them up. The girls were horrified. Okay, here's a picture of his bugs pinned up and how he would label them. Vincent's, I'll read you a little bit more and then I'm going to talk you through painting a little bit more. Vincent's mother shared his love of the outdoors, but she worried that he was spending too much time alone in the fields. She tried to convince him to pick up a hobby like drawing. She gave him art books, pencils, and sketch pads and encouraged him to trace the images he saw in the paintings. But Vincent quickly grew bored with copying and once again, he ventured into the meadow to sketch his own vision of nature. He wasn't happy with his drawings, however, and rarely, rarely showed them to anyone. He later called them nothing more than, you ready? Little scratches. Remember that word from earlier? Only one person could get Vincent to change his solitary ways, his younger brother, Theo. Theo is the is the brother that Vincent and him exchanged letters, right? That we were talking about earlier. Vincent's brother, Theo, was the opposite. Uh-oh, did you poke your eye? Uh-oh, oh no, no, no. Uh-oh, emergency. Okay. Um, sometimes, our, sometimes our siblings, nice, Liam. Okay, now Liam, slow down. I love that you're painting furiously, but just slow down a little bit. I got another one too, so. <laughs> All right, we'll keep going. I call this one the mind or feelings. <laughs> so sometimes our siblings bring out the best and the worst in us, right? Does anybody have a sibling that um, brings out the worst in us? <laughs> no, some of us don't have siblings, right? So sometimes our parents can do that to us. <laughs> Yes. Anyways, exactly. you know what I didn't mention was that Theo's, uh, Theo, Vincent's brother, not only did he send him money for his art supplies, but the reason he did that was he believed that Vincent was a really good artist and he was an art dealer. So he, not until later, would sell paintings and that would help pay for Vincent's art supplies. Okay. So we're going to go back to looking at our moon. You, Abby, you can start another picture if you want. You don't have to do that board, okay? There's a little canvas, and there's another little painting. So it's nothing to panic about. Okay, so here's my moon. And my paint dried a little bit while I was talking about Vincent a little bit. And... What you can do is start to think about putting down those really cool brush strokes that that Vincent did. And those brush strokes in art are called impasto, which means you put it on like it's toothpaste, nice and thick. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my blue and I'm gonna open up my white and I'm gonna go nuts and put down the paint. Who's, who's ready to do that? Now remember, if I dip into that white, do I need to be careful and grab it from the side? Yes, okay. So let's watch how I do it and maybe that will help you. I'm gonna put them on in little brush strokes and the paint's gonna be thick. Boop. She's doing white. Liam, that might be something that you wanna do now that you put on your paint. 
your first coats you could now put on and I'm going to make this white dotted brush stroke surface. I'm going to go all the way around my moon. They're like little blobs, basically. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the blue. I'm not going to clean my brush, but I'm going to grab it from the side. And I'm going to blob on the blue. If you were to see Van Gogh's paintings, you would see the paint was very, very thick. He went through a lot of paint. And I'm going to keep going back and forth between bl doing blue and white. Just going to add some more paint because you said it was. And it's okay if I make a lighter blue in the process. And you'll want to fill in the area in the moon, inside that crescent moon. If you made a crescent moon, then you want to do this in pasto thick paint business inside the moon. I think it helps to make sound effects when you paint because then you can burp, beep. Can you do that? Maybe that would help. Jack, you know how to make sound effects when you're painting, right? Or maybe you just want to paint that area in. and then put the paint thick on top. You can do it any way you want. It's your painting. Hey, Stan. Oh, I'm yelling to my husband who's upstairs. I want him to take a picture of, of you guys painting. So I'm going to keep extending out my impasto brush strokes to the outside of the moon. And I'm going to keep looking at, as I look at the moon on my picture of Van Gogh's Starry Night, he uses a lot of yellow. So I'm going to go, my moon was kind of thin with the paint, so I'm actually going to get more yellow. And I'm going to glob up that moon. Oh, you guys all just 